Hey everyone, um, I just want to use uh, the next couple of minutes just to go over uh, what's next .js. Next.js, um, if you didn't already know, is a project by Zeus. They do things like uh, Zeus Now and the Hyper Terminal. That's built in a front end technology uh, using Electron. Uh, they've got some really cool projects that you certainly should check out. Um, but I kind of just want to go over Next.js and why I think it's really important in the web space right now with front-end frameworks really taking dominance uh, there. So let's um, just sort of dive in and, and see maybe why you may decide to use it. And I think some of the reasons I like it um, is for the hot code reloading and the automatic code splitting. Now, Next.js uses a file system-based router um, and it is really good at um, making decisions for you with their convention over configuration process. And if you're familiar with Ruby on Rails, that could be um, or Laravel, that could be um, a real uh, a real advantage. And you know, you certainly you may uh, understand why that's important. You don't have to sort of set anything up. That you know, there's practically zero configuration to um, launch in and create a Next.js app. Uh, we've got also the, one of the bigger things is server-side rendering and it's very easy to de deploy a Next.js project. In the first couple of slides, I'd just like to go over server-side rendering and why I think that's important. Um, a lot of people say to me and a lot of things that I was thinking of when I first started React was server-side rendering, that's just about SEO, right? Well, in actual fact, um, no, it's not. Um, and one of the reasons is that although server-side server -side rendering and SEO are a, are a huge part of um, of each other, and uh, it's not the only reason. Your applications can be way more performant um, if you use server-side render them instead of relying on the um, on the, uh, the front end to handle everything. Now, server-side rendering it actually is a little bit slower than client-side rendering when it comes to the time to first byte when you're loading uh, your web pages because there's kind of a large chunk of data that's got to come down and then your application can sort of work on the front end. And one of the key things with Next.js is the automatic code splitting. Um, it, it, it will uh, only sort of download the data in the, in the JavaScript file for that page. So the kind of that time to first byte is slightly reduced. Um, but one of the great things that I like about Next.js is very performant because of that automatic code splitting and server-side rendering. So don't always think, yeah, it's SEO and server-side rendering. That's the huge thing here. But in actual fact, it's there's a lot of other things that come into play. Um, so I certainly wouldn't rule out oh, service, you know, server-side rendering. We don't need that because you know we, we don't care about SEO. Well, it's not just about that. Like I say, there's certainly a lot of other things that you should consider. Um, but yeah, performance is one of the, the big things with server-side rendering. Now, as I mentioned before, Next.js works with a file-based router. So what we have there, uh, if we walk through a simple example, um, is it just allows us to sort of use Next.js's conventions uh, to just get, just get get started. So if we walk through an example application here and we just use yarn and knit and we then want to add the next at the beta flag and that will install the latest version uh, of, of next for us. Um, it's pretty close to the master branch on GitHub, although I don't think it I don't think yarn directly pulls from GitHub's master branch, but uh, they're, they're constantly updating. This thing gets updated two, three times a day. The beta releases are, are, are becoming more and more frequent. So they're really working hard to the, towards the next version. Obviously, with Next, yes, you can bring your own version of React and React DOM. So you'd want to bring those in as well. So if you're not quite there yet with, uh, you know, moving forward with any new React features that they drop in, um, you can sort of hold off with that. You have, and the other thing is, uh, you know, the next JS guys, they don't actually have to uh, keep publishing when a new React update drops. You know, you know, waiting for that kind of thing, um, that like I've seen on other projects, can be quite um, disheartening, and it can be kind of an obstacle. Your team may not want to adopt a framework, or uh, you, you know, or a minimalistic framework that is, to be just because that. You know, you rely on someone else publishing the dependencies that you use as your core core feature. Um, with this, you bring your own React and React on, which is excellent. Um, then all we need to do is uh, drop in three um, parts to our package JSON, and that's dev, build, and start. Now the dev script just runs next, and that is a development uh, environment that it boots up for you. 
Um, it doesn't have some features, um, but it you know practically a lot of the server side rendering can be sort of utilized and looked at with with, with that. Um, and obviously, if you want to build your project, uh, we'll go into a little bit about deployment later. But next just allows you to say next build, and it'll build your project production ready um, with their con you know their their conventions, which is phenomenal. And also yarn start um, that will then run your application in production mode. Um, which is again fantastic, very easy to do, and very little configuration required. Um, so, like I mentioned, the file based system router, uh, it assumes that you want to create a page in the pages directory. So, if we're going to have an index page, of course, we're going to create index.js. And inside of there, let's just export a simple file uh, using ES2015 and let's export hello world as our h1 tags. Now, this is all you need to put inside of this index.js page. You don't need to include React because it assumes by default you're using React and you want to import that in your pages directory. So that's not something that you need to do here. So let's get started and create that file. And then we want to run yarn dev in our terminal. And then we should have something that looks like this. And by default, Next.js runs on port 3000. So we should then see hello world. So let's assume with that example, we want to create an about page. So we will create about.js inside of our pages directory and again export uh, some uh, heading tag called about us. And run in yarn dev. What we then should be able to do is go to localhost port 3000 forward slash about. Now you'll see the forward slash about it follows that same convention and th that's phenomenal. That, that gets us started in, in, in using Next.js without any editing of any routes files or anything like that. You know, if you're creating a static website with this, um, or a very minimalist website for your company or um, brand, you know, you don't need to hack together any uh, routes, get requests, pose requests, things like that. Just start dropping in your pages. We'll go into a little bit more uh, detail about that later and, and hopefully in another episode about actually building the project. Um, but just assume that Next.js ships a lot of conventions and decisions that you don't have to make, which is, I think, great. <coughs> uh, routing. Um, you're probably thinking at this point, well, that's cool, Jamie. You can go to slash about, slash home, slash uh, product, slash catalog. But what if I actually want to interact with the, those pages? What if I want a header and I want to link to those pages? Do I use something like React Router? Well, actually, um, Next.js ships with a link uh, module, and that allows you to import link from next slash link. And you can use that within your pages to uh, and layouts to create... Uh, links between those pages, which is again great. You don't have to use any other library. They've got that baked in, so they kind of done a lot of thinking for us here. And they don't, you know, they're not relying on us to sort of hack in other projects and use those. It's all there, which is fantastic. So let's assume taking some uh, con convention over React development. Let's create a folder named Components and place a layout.js file in there. Now this is kind of a higher order component for our React children, and inside of here, let's import that link module and export. And using ES2015 um, destruction, let's grab the children from our props and we will use it inside of our main tag to, to put in, to uh, show. Uh, we've put in a footer, but more importantly, we have a navigation at the top using that link directive to then link between our pages. So we have a home and about link. And when you click on those, we should get it. And this is what we have here. This can be, uh, can be whatever you like, and this can be on any part of the page and it will then w work and, and interact. Um, so let's go back to our index.js and utilize that uh, layout component by just wrapping our uh, export in, a, in our layout component. But we also have to uh, import that uh, layout from our components directory at the top of that file. And again, let's do the same thing on our about page, wrap our about page inside of our layout component and import our layout component. We should have something that looks like this. So you can click between the pages and it loads. Great, simple. The thought of everything. Now, the link directive, the component here that you use within your application to navigate between pages, that will, on click, it will then begin to download. So I mentioned automatic code splitting before. This will actually fetch that code um, using Service Worker to um, download the code, pop it in your browser, cache and show you when you click it'll create that transition but actually 
this kind, there could be a delay there if there's a lot of code that needs to be fetched. So there's actually a special flag that you can use called prefetch. And that will, when the page loads, it will prefetch that data using a service worker as well, but it'll do it sort of immediately. So you can then sort of navigate between those pages. Um, again, great. These guys are thinking of everything for us. I love them. Um, and again, data fetching. Jamie, these components are super simple. Um, but actually my app actually is of some real value and it needs to fetch from an API or GraphQL or Apollo. These guys have thought of everything. They've actually wrapped uh, our React lifecycle methods um, and they have something called get initial props and this is an asynchronous function. So whether you load that on the server or the client, you will then be able to utilize that. The page won't load until you uh, this, this is executed and returned some props for all our, our component to use. So using their example on their GitHub page, they actually call out to GitHub to get the, um, to just get some information about their repo and they return the amount of sort of stargazers um, as props. So you'll notice we're returning an object here of stars and then we're grabbing the count of the stargazers. That's passed down as a prop so you can use that stars part on your page anywhere you like. And that's just passed down as a prop, which is super, super simple. There's no advanced configuration here. You just add this inside. If you're using a stateless component, if you're actually using a functional component um, or a React component, sorry, you will be able to just set this function as well and it all works the same. So they've got you covered if you want to use stateless or stateful components, they're, they're there as well. Um, and more impo most importantly is these applications are super easy to deploy and server-side rendering traditionally, um, when it sort of first started to come about with React was you had to do a lot of you know, manual configuration on the server. You had to kind of create express servers to um, turn your React components to text and then inject them to render. And there was all this confusion. With Next.js, you actually don't need to do any of that. Um, those guys will create a, a production uh, method that you can extend their framework, which we'll go into a bit more detail in a later video. Um, but just know that it's super easy to deploy, whether you want to use it on GitHub Pages or actually use it on a server like Heroku or AWS. You can use their deploy function. And that's uh, that, that's super easy. Now, if you have heard of Zit now, uh, if you install that um, using the global flag, all you need to run inside of your directory is now. And that will give you a link to your application and publish it for free. And you can send that link to anyone to, to view your browser. Now, if you want to use it on something like GitHub Pages, you, might, you, you, know, you certainly won't utilize a lot of the server-side rendering capabilities. Um, and you, you know, but you can use Next Export. Uh, that's kind of a new feature, um, and it's not something that I've used, but it's certainly there if you want to give it a try. There's a lot of information on their GitHub, and it will talk you through exporting. And that's pretty much all you need to run is Next Export, and it'll give you an HTML representation of each page and things, which is super cool. Um, I've not really seen this done in a lot of uh, minimalist frameworks, that is. Uh, they're working on v3 which is on the github branch and if you use that um, beta flag when you install next.js you will take advantage of that they're working super hard for v3 um, it will be more performance more quicker um, that you know they're trying to improve the code splitting and server-side rendering times and more importantly it's going to support react fiber um, which is react version 16 which should drop soon um, they're hoping by the end of the year, I think, when I was at React London, they said. Um, but that's that's uh, that's really fascinating that these guys are working super hard to to support that when it drops. You can find obviously more about github.com forward slash zia slash next dot js. And there's tons of examples on there for you to sort of go through whether you want to use React um, and Redux, uh, React, Redux, and Apollo, Apollo, GraphQL. Uh, you want to use components, style components, CSS modules in, with your JS. There's examples for, for a lot of things on there. Um, so certainly recommend that you check this repo out. Um, I just super love this project. It's it's allowed me to sort of create websites and, and go fast um, without any thinking in terms of configuration and setup. This project is super cool and the guys over, over at Zero are doing an amazing job. So a huge shout out to them. And I certainly recommend that you give it a try. If you've got any questions, Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. I am at Notrab. That's just Barton backwards if it's hard to remember. Or leave a comment and I'll aim to answer them as soon as I can. Have a great day and check out next.js.